Hello, I'm Mrs. Edwards, and today we're going to start off by introducing these two formulas of a derivative in terms of a limit. The formula there on the left-hand side is the derivative at a single point, but the formula on the right-hand side is the derivative of a function at any x value. We're going to use both of these to find the same thing, but then we'll be able to compare them to see the benefits and drawbacks of each. We have a function f of x, which is a parabola, x squared minus 3x plus 4, and we would like to find f prime of 2. To find f prime of 2, I'm going to start here on the left-hand side with the derivative of a function at a point, x equals a. So in this case, our a is the number 2. I'm going to substitute in 2 every place you see an a. Okay, next I can do another substitution because we already know what f of x is. That is this x squared minus 3x plus 4. So I'm going to replace that. And then I can figure out what the answer to f of 2 is by substituting 2 into my function. So 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 4 equals 2. So that 2 is not that 2. It's because I substituted 2 into the function and the answer was 2. All right, next I can simplify the numerator. 4 minus 2 is 2. When you want to find a limit as x approaches a number, step one is to substitute that number in, see what happens. If you get a real value answer, a real number, then that is your answer to the limit. Um, so let's see what happens. If I substitute 2 into this expression, 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 2 is 0, and 2 minus 2 is 0. We just got 0 over 0, which is known as an indeterminate form, cannot be determined. Um, so the next step, if you have an indeterminate form, like 0 over 0, is to factor, cancel, resubstitute. I'm going to factor that numerator, and then the x minus 2s can be canceled. We have the limit now as x approaches 2 of x minus 1, and resubstitute. So if I substitute 2 into my expression x minus 1, I'm going to get 2 minus 1, which is 1. So we found the answer to f prime of 2 equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and draw you a picture of what we found to help you connect what this formula is actually finding. All right, so here I have drawn the parabola x squared minus 3x plus 4, and we're having f prime at 2. So the x value is 2. When I substitute 2 into this function, I get out 2. So there's that coordinate on the parabola. And f prime of 2 means the slope of the tangent at that point, when x is 2, happens to equal 1. So notice if I draw in the tangent line to the parabola at that point, the slope of this tangent line rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. So the slope of the tangent at x equals 2 is 1. There are a few different ways we could say that. Um, at x equals 2, the derivative is 1. At x equals 2, the slope of the tangent is 1. At x equals 2, in a story problem, the instantaneous rate of change is 1. Next, let's use this formula here on the right. We're going to end up finding the generic derivative and then we will focus on finding f prime of 2. It's going to take a bit of work, so I'm going to go to a separate slide, but eventually we're going to compare these side by side. All right, so here's this formula, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Just as a note um, for those of you using a different textbook, h in some textbooks they call delta x, kind of looks like a triangle x, change in x. So every place you see an h, it would just be a delta x. 
On the AP exam, they use H, so I'm going with H. I can make a substitution in for f of x plus h and for f of x. I need a little scratch work to make those substitutions though. So I'm going to come off to the side and find the answer to f of x plus h. I simply go to the f function, x squared minus 3x plus 4, and x squared minus 3x plus 4, and I'm going to replace every x in the f function with x plus h. So I'm going to pop those in there. There we go. And now we need to simplify. So x plus h quantity squared, we're going to have to FOIL that. And then after we FOIL, then we're going to distribute the negative 3 through the x plus h, and then we have the plus 4. Um, I did already combine when I wrote this. When I'm foiled together x plus h times x plus h in the outer and inner. Uh, when I combine those, those are the 2xh, but all of that is the answer to f of x plus h. So f of x plus h, that, all of that is going to go right there. Okay, then I have minus, and then f of x, so the function x squared minus 3x plus 4, that's going to go right there. Now just be careful when you do make that substitution for f of x, because there's a minus here, that negative is going to need to get distributed through the entire function. All right, so I put those numbers in. I went ahead and distributed the negative through. We can simplify the numerator a bit. x squared minus x squared, those are gone. Negative 3x and 3x, those are gone. And so the terms left, ooh, and I didn't cross out those, but four and negative four, those are gone. So all we have left there is two xh plus h squared minus three h. Now that I have my limit set up using this formula up here, to find the limit, step one, substitute in the numbers, see what happens. So I'm gonna replace every h in this um, expression with zero. So if I replace every h with 0 and simplify, 2x times 0 is 0, plus 0 squared minus 3 times 0, the numerator is 0, so we get 0 over 0, which again, that's an indeterminate form. So the next thing that we want to do is factor, cancel, resubstitute. So looking back here at that, ex that limit, in the numerator, notice that all of the terms have an h in common. So I'm going to factor out the h, and now we can cancel this h with this h. We're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h minus 3. And now that we've factored canceled, we want to resubstitute, so we're going to replace the h with 0. And you're like, what? Shouldn't it be a number? No, it's okay. We have um, an expression here, 2x minus 3. This is the slope of the tangent, but it's generic. The slope of the tangent is 2x minus 3. Um, now, if I did want to find, ultimately, that f prime of 2, right, um, if I now know f prime of x, the slope of the tangent generically is 2x minus 3, then to find f prime of 2, I can substitute 2 into this equation we got, and 2 times 2 minus 3 is 1. We got the same answer that we did last time, and you're probably thinking, and you are right, that this way was a little more work. So why would you do it that way? All right, so we're going to look at these side by side. We already found the derivative at a single point, and we got 1. Then just, just now, we found that the derivative generically was 2x minus 3. We substituted in 2, and so at that same spot at 2, we substituted 2 in, 2 times 2 minus 3, 
and we got out 1 because the slope of the tangent is 1. The benefit, however, of using this formula here on the right is now if I want to find the slope of the tangent at a whole bunch of different points on the parabola, I don't have to redo this entire process. In the short term, this one is easier. If you only wanted the slope of the tangent at a single point, well, I would use the formula here um, on the left. But if I want the slope of the tangent at multiple points, well, then this one is going to be shorter. So let's look at a few more. What if I wanted the slope of the tangent at 3 halves? 3 halves is about 1.5, all right, so we're right about there. And then I go up until I hit the curve. I happen to be at the vertex. I substitute 3 halves into my derivative that I just found, and I end up getting 0. And look there, the slope of the tangent at that minimum is 0. What if I wanted the slope of the tangent at 3? So there's 3, so there's the coordinate um, where the x is 3, and we want the slope of the tangent line there. I plug in 3 and I get out 3, and notice the slope of that line is 3. The reason why the generic slope of the tangent has an x in it is because at various x values, the slope is going to change. Let's say I go with 1. Come over here to 1. There's my coordinate on the parabola at x equals 1. Plug 1 into my derivative function, and I end up getting negative 1. And that's because the slope of the tangent over here is negative 1. Just since I have this nice example in front of us, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and throw in a little bit of an application here, although on tonight's homework you won't have to do this part. Uh, but notice if we had, uh, we used instantaneous rate of change. Let's say this represented how fast a car was going. Well, at time um, 1.5, at time 3 halves, the answer to the derivative was zero. So that means the instantaneous rate of change at three halves, how fast it's going at exactly one and a half seconds is zero, it's not moving. But then at let's say two seconds, the answer to the derivative was one. So at two seconds, the instantaneous rate of change is one, meaning at two seconds, it is going a velocity of one mile per hour, not very fast. Okay, then at say three seconds, we got out three, and so that means at three seconds, the instantaneous rate of change is three. The velocity is three at three seconds. So the car is speeding up. If we substitute in one, the answer was negative one. That means the instantaneous rate of change was negative one miles per hour. It was driving backwards. Okay, so um, just a little bit of connection to um, some of those conversations we had in the past. Now that we're able to find the slope of a tangent at a specific x value, we can take this one step further and then write the equation of that tangent line. To write the equation of any line, you just need a point and a slope. So in this particular case, um, the point, if I substitute negative 2 into that function, negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 4, I get out 14. So we have the point that is on the parabola, but it is also going to be on that tangent line. And then we can find the slope of the tangent at negative 2. We just went over how to do that. A moment ago, we got the generic derivative of f of x to be 2x minus 3. So I could substitute the negative 2 into that, and I get negative 7. Or you could go about it the short way of finding the derivative at a single point, but hopefully you're starting to see that if you want it at multiple points, the limit formula 
for a generic uh, derivative can be a little bit faster. All right, but now that we've got a point and a slope, we're ready to write the line. I'm gonna have y minus the y coordinate, which is 14. We plug in negative two, we get out 14. So this is the coordinate, right? Negative two, 14. I substitute those ones in, and then the slope of the tangent at negative two is negative seven, so our slope is negative seven, and I've got the equation of the tangent line. I happen to have it written in point-slope form. If the directions say that you wanna write the equation of the tangent line in slope-intercept form, well, then I'm gonna to need to distribute the negative seven and add over 14. But if it just says write the equation of the tangent line, we can stop right there. Next, let's write the equation of the normal line to the function at x equals negative two. Remember the normal line simply means the perpendicular um, at x equals negative two. So it's gonna be pretty much the same, but remember slopes that are perpendicular are opposite reciprocals. Opposite means if it was negative, make it positive, or positive, make it negative. Reciprocal, flip it over. All right, so our um, slope here was negative seven, which is like negative seven over one. So opposite makes it positive, seven over one. Flip it over, and now it's positive one seventh. It's still the same point but I'm gonna put in 1 7th instead of negative seven. And now we have the equation of the normal line. The last thing I wanna do is just make a quick sketch and put all of these pieces together uh, to make sure you're not just following process, but you understand what it is you're finding. Um, so here is a picture of f of x. We've got our parabola. And then at x equals negative two, so I go to negative two. If I substitute negative two into the function, I get out 14, so we have this point on the parabola. And then there is a tangent line, y minus 14 equals negative seven times x plus two. If we graph this line, it's right there. There's, a, there's the tangent line. And then if we go and graph this line right there, we're gonna get that one. And so notice, this purple one is perpendicular to the green one. And we have our original function, we have the equation of the tangent and the equation of the normal line.